Fast Audis are synonymous with the inline five-cylinder turbocharged engine. For 45 years, the firm's five-cylinder engine has been powering rapid RS Audis and some very special cars in between. And to celebrate, we've gathered together some of the finest five-cylinder Audis from the four-ring firm. But first, a recap. Let's rewind to the late 70s when Audi first introduced its five-cylinder motor with the second-generation Audi 100 Saloon. The 2.1-litre model is Audi's five-cylinder Genesis. Audi even opted for the power of five for its diesels. But it wasn't until 1980 and the 10-valve Quattro where things really got interesting. The original Quattro was a transformative road car, bringing big power for the time and all-wheel drive to the table, which ultimately changed the world of rallying as well as setting the template to make four-wheel drive more commonplace on the roads. Well, I never thought the day would come that I'd get behind the wheel of one of these, and I've managed to refrain from the obvious cliche about firing it up. But from the moment you get inside, that offbeat five-cylinder characteristic growl is immediately apparent. I hope you can hear it. And yes, by modern standards, it is a bit sluggish. The 2.1 litre engine produces 197 brake horsepower, which means today it's outdone by a modern two litre Q3. But once you push past that initial lag, which is quite large, shall we say, and you've got around 3,500 RPM shown on the rev counter, the boost really comes in and you can feel the car's flexibility. It has pretty impressive performance. And actually, other areas of the Quattro, they're a match for it too. The steering, it's much more precise than I expected and more delicate, same as the gear change. I thought it was gonna be a bit woolly, but it's not at all. You have to be precise with it and there's quite a long throw. But when you get it right, it feels really nice going into gear. There is some roll. You know, chassis technology has come on a long way in 40 years, but even a few short laps, it's easy to understand why the car felt so good 40 years ago. It's a very special machine, but I don't think it's quite the most special Quattro out there. That honor goes to this car, the short wheelbase Sport Quattro. And it feels like a true homologation special, which is because back in the mid 80s, Audi needed this car to keep pace with its rallying rivals, so it chose to chop 320 millimetres out of the Quattro's wheelbase to make it more alert and more agile. And you can really feel that on the move. Audi went to town with this car, with CFRP and Kevlar parts all over to improve the weight distribution and reduce weight overall. But its work didn't stop there because it uprated the 2.1 litre engine's output to 302 brake horsepower, which resulted in a 0 to 62 time of 4.8 seconds. Now, that's fast by modern standards, and although there is some lag there, definitely, once you wind this engine up, it is really still a quick car. We're coming onto the back straight now, so get on the throttle, let the revs build, and as the boost comes in, the Sport Quattro, it really takes off, it's surprisingly quick. And then you've got to get on the brakes. So Audi Sport, well, they fitted ventilated disc brakes to improve performance as well. They completely retuned the suspension and tweaked the differential setup to make this car more special, but also harder edged and improve performance. It very much feels like a homologation special. And it was necessary because it made this next car possible. After Audi's initial rallying success, its rivals caught up, and on the gravel, tarmac and snow stages of the World Rally Championship, the German brand needed more. Just 214 road-going Sport Quattros were built, and they gave us this, the ultimate expression of the Quattro, the S1 E2. I am tingling with excitement sat here in the driver's seat of this Group B monster. I've not actually sat in the car today yet, so I wanted to capture this experience of what it's like to start it up with you. So I've been told you flick the first battery master switch on, you flick the second one on, 
we get a whir of a fuel pump. Stay off the throttle, otherwise it's gonna flood the engine, and then push the starter button. Well, it churned into life and it feels aggressive, the sound and the vibrations in here. I'm told that the boost comes in from around four and a half, five thousand 5,000 RPM. Now it's got a pretty simple gearbox, but it's got a paddle clutch, so hook first, it feels beautifully precise. Let's see if I can get it off the line without stalling. Well, the clutch is immediate and I hope you can hear me because this thing, even at low speed, oh my God, it feels insane. The gearbox is so nice. I'm told that it's running around 500 horsepower today. So let's see what this feels like. Oh my God. Every car I drove actually ran with an early double clutch gearbox, something that's now commonplace in many fast Audis. So with its 395 brake horsepower, 2.5 litre turbocharged engine and its clever four wheel drive system, the modern day RS3 owes so much to its ancestors. And it's about now that it's worth pausing for a moment of reflection because this latest RS3 is very likely to be the last Audi with a five cylinder engine. And while in the 80s you needed a Group B rally car to dip below four seconds from zero to 60, this family hatchback shrugs it off in 3.8. But it's about more than that though. It's about the noise, those boxy flared wheel arches and the four wheel drive system, of course. And on that point, the new RS3 has a clever adaptation. It's called RS Torque Splitter. And basically what that is, is a clever rear differential that can send up to 100% of the torque to the rear axle to an outside rear wheel. Now, in the past, fast Audis may have been accused of being a blunt instrument, but with this new car and that RS Torque Splitter diff, that is not true today the level of adjustability on offer 
is very impressive. But simply though, all that technology, it just makes it more fun. There's just no lag at all. It's so linear, the double clutch gearbox, the shifts are rapid, beautifully blipped on the way down. Now, it might be a sad thing that in 2022, a 1985 Sport Quattro just wouldn't see which way this RS3 went. But importantly, each car has its place and that's all right for me. You see, the RS3 is the last in a long line of iconic five-cylinder Audis. The 20 valve Quattro that brought in so many changes, the S2 Coupe and the RS2 Avant. The car that, with a little help from Porsche in its development, made fast wagons unbelievably cool. It set the template for generations of RS4s and RS6s too. Then there's the TT RS and the RSQ3. Mm, all right, maybe not the RSQ3, but culminating in this latest and greatest RS3, it doesn't matter which five-cylinder Audi you drive. After 45 years, it's a special experience and we'll be sad when it's over. So here's to you, Audi, for 45 years of five-cylinder glory.